Hi, and welcome to my short tutorial about making geometric shapes in Illustrator. The shapes that I'm talking about are the type that you see in graphic design or a lot of artworks where there's basically a bunch of triangles and they're all varying shades and it has a very interesting effect in terms of making it look very dynamic. And that's something I really like to do with my work, so I thought I would share what I do, share how I do it because it's very straightforward. So with Illustrator, you basically just open up a file, and you can do that with new, and then set your dimensions and everything like that. Very straightforward. And the tools that I'm going to be using today is the selection tool, which is basically like a, just your typical mouse tool, which will click, you can select, move around, scale, and just, you know, apply actions to objects. There is also the direct selection tool, which is right beside the selection tool, and it is a white cursor rather than black. And that tool is used to specifically edit and manipulate the points on a path. And the next tool that is going to be used is the pen tool, and that is basically the main one. And I'm hoping that by the end of this tutorial, you'll at least have somewhere to start in terms of knowing how to use it and how to apply it. And maybe a little grasp on a few things you can do with it. Under the pen tool, there's also the add anchor point tool, the delete anchor point tool, and the convert anchor point tool. And these three will probably come up in the tutorial, and, and if not, I will touch upon them at the end. Some other basic tool that will be used is the eyedropper tool, which is just essentially to select a specific color. Another thing I wanted to point out was the swatches of color, which is pretty much similar to most programs. But in Illustrator, for the objects that you create, it can be via the pen tool or simply the rectangle tool or anything like that, the fill is the solid square, whereas a stroke is the one with a little hole in it. You can swap the colors easily, and then there's the default, which is the white and black. And there's also a way to simply drag the color, which is a little bit new for some programs, and you can like just put it on top of the stroke, and it will become the same one rather than having to eyedropper each time. So that's a quick little, almost time saver, but not really. Alright, to get started, you just have to select the pen tool. And the pen tool is extremely straightforward in terms of using it because you just click and there's a point. And the point following will simply just create a line or path from the original from the previous point. And then you keep doing it going until you click the original point that you started with, and that will close the path. And you know this because when you hover over it with the pen tool, the normal little pen sign suddenly has a little circle beside it which basically shows you that the path will be closed once you click on that point. So that is one shape and if you continued on with the pen tool it wouldn't continue on from that shape it would start making a new one. So I'm just going to continue doing that. And essentially when you're, I'm making these types of objects I kind of just place wherever I feel like, and I don't really have a set plan for that, I just base it on aesthetics. And while I'm placing, I kind of just try to make sure they're irregular and not too much of the same thing, varying in shapes and sizes and angles. One thing you might notice while I'm creating this is that I don't exactly continue to make a new shape right where I have another, my previous shape because if I try to go from the vertices, since I'm trying to be so close to all the other shapes to avoid white spaces, the pen tool will actually become the delete anchor point tool, and that does as it says, and deletes the anchor point. So, in order to avoid that, I just go for the old shapes since they aren't active anymore, and I just continue on from there. And as the, the flip side is, if you go on the line somewhere, you'll notice that the sign becomes a plus and that would be the add anchor point so you can easily just add anchor points onto your old paths without having to create a new one. So I'm just going to add a few more triangles. And it doesn't have to be triangles or anything like that, it's just, I just happen to always lean towards that. And there's a basic shape. So the next step would just be coloring it in and I basically select certain shapes that I want to change and sometimes I try to do this in a calculated manner where I would like to emulate a certain type of light source but some other times I'm just 
more random about it, like right now. I'm just going to make sure that the fill and stroke are the same so there's no outlines. And I just keep doing that with the others. And I just have brighter shades and then darker shades until I'm finished coloring it off. And there we go. This one's pretty underdeveloped, but it just is to give you a basic idea. When I'm done with my geometric shapes, I typically select all the objects and I group them, which basically treats them as a single object rather than multiple separate ones. And after that, I just expand it and finish my page. And in order to save as a JPEG, you would have to select save for web and devices rather than save or save as because if you go to save the only formats you can do are the illustrator eps and pdf which could also work but if you want to save into jpeg you would have to go to save for web and devices And once you do that, there's another window that'll show up where you'll have to go through the quality and such like that. So I also want to go over some of the other things you can do with the pen tool. Because rather than just make straight shapes or lines like you see in this tutorial, you can also make curves or circles or arches. And I feel like the way the pen tool works in terms of movement and curves, it's a lot more easy to understand once you start using it because it just becomes intuitive after that. For example, I did this curve point and once you select another point you might think that it would just be straight since that's how it typically works. But if you just click a point it'll just go along with the curve that was in the other one so it kind of makes a more natural shape that way. But sometimes you don't really want that. So in order to avoid that, you do a curve, and then you basically go towards your point, hover over it, and the little convert anchor point tool will automatically pop up, and you click it, and the little handle that was there before goes away, and now you can actually go a straight, rather than have it being affected by the previous curve. The opposite can also be done, where you add an anchor point or handle. Another thing that's really interesting, not interesting, but in useful in terms of using the pen tool is that you can use a direct selection tool to actually manually change the shape of it rather than creating a new one. So you use the direct selection tool, you click on a point. If it's active, it'll be blue rather than the little white ones. And then you just move it around, and you can also affect the handles and change how curved things are. And there's basically just a lot of playing around that you can do. So yes, I hope this tutorial is helpful. And not only really showed you how to make just a geometric shape to hand into some of your art projects, but also kind of a brief overview of how you can use the pen tool in really basic situations. But also expand on the, that knowledge and play around with the pen tool and then you can do a lot of different kind of work. Thank you for listening.